Hi there. Today I'm going to be talking about the Scalar Software Engineering program. First I'm going to start with who this program is meant for. If you are somebody who is aiming at different levels of engineering for a backend position or a full stack engineering position or a front end engineering position or a data engineering position or even an AI engineering position then this video is for you. Now what is the goal of the program? The goal of the program is to make sure you are able to do well in interviews as well as you are able to do well on the job both have to go hand in hand otherwise your long term gets affected third is then how do we make sure that the content that we will deliver that is delivered effectively so the way the program works is while you have live lectures every single lecture is followed by assignments and most of these assignments are not mcq questions but rather the kind of assignments where you get to apply your skills for example in the case of dsa it's coding assignments uh in the case of a design question it's typically a conversation or a place where you upload a diagram and then we give you feedback for your diagram that you uploaded um in fact we have state of the art ai systems which take your interview as well on subjective skills and give you very to the point feedback on where you you're doing well versus where you're not the same state of the art system is today being used by iit madras um and a bunch of coaching institutes to drive a very similar subjective skilling for their own needs now that you understand that how the learning is delivered let me also now talk about what is taught in the program now whether you want to become a back end engineer or a front end or a full stack engineer or a data engineer the one truth is that there are some parts which are common to every engineer for example one of the things that is expected of you is that you're really good at problem solving given anything you can translate that to code and sure there are ai systems today that can help you write the basics of code but you should be able to understand code in detail so hence your first few months are dedicated to building your problem solving skills and coding skills which is what we call as data structures and algorithms we go right from basic data structures like arrays to then move on to heaps trees and finally get to dynamic programming and graph and make sure that you become comfortable every day with more and more practice along with the classes that are happening on the side once you're done with data structures and algorithms then we also believe that no matter again what kind of engineer you are you should understand the concept of storage data is usually stored in databases and hence you should understand that in depth um in fact we also see that there are a lot of very very senior engineers who don't understand uh certain principles of uh, let's say even relational rdbm bms right relational data databases so hence important to cover that basis just to make sure there are no gaps there so we spend little bit amount of time making you familiar with relational databases now this is the common part post that now you get to choose your specialization which could either be back end engineering or data engineering or full stack engineering within data engineering we get into depths of multi threading uh, computer science fundamentals um, low level design and that's where you actually start building your first project uh, in case you are a fresher if you are already experienced we we recommend you to skip that module where you building your first project um, then we go deep inside back end engineering which is uh how do you maintain api versions for example how do you use messaging queues how do you uh um, build let's say a text oriented system uh where maybe you have to use elastic search uh so we have a bunch of concepts which we cover in advanced form of software engineering that is then followed by what is called as system design or high level design this is where you learn how to architect large scale systems now which is which basically is firstly teaching you about the building blocks um how does load balancer work how does caching work uh what is master slave what is multi master uh what are different kind of databases what are they optimized for versus not optimized for um what is a messaging queue uh what is a text heavy database optimized for text search um what is an object storage those are building blocks and once you're done with that then we start with case studies and we start designing systems for example how would you design a google search or how do you design a facebook messenger how, how do you design 
let's say Netflix or Hotstar. Um, how do you go about designing a platform like Twitter? How do you uh, design, let's say, something like an IRCTC? So we do a bunch of those case studies so that you become comfortable with system design. Note that all of these are augmented with assignments. For example, in the case of system design, your assignments in now scalar would be conversational assessments, which is not only do you attend class, but then post the class, you also have maybe another case study that you might want to do where you get to present whatever you are thinking. And then there is somebody who's cross questioning you back, which is again an AI system. And these AI systems are still very, very effective. Very similarly in low level design, when I ask you to, let's say, prepare a schema for a given platform, um, you can either have conversation to explain your schema or you can ex upload your schema diagrams and then the system gives you feedback on what cases you might have missed out on or might ask you to do secondary tasks post that. This makes your learning very, very effective. Now, this was back in engineering. Very similarly, you have data engineering. Data engineering is where, again, you learn similar system design as you did in back in engineering. But apart from that, um, you learn depths of, let's say, how do you write a MapReduce job, or how do you write a Spark job? How do you do data warehousing? How do you create a data lake? Uh, how do you do data migration, principles of data migration? Um, and you create maybe one project around data engineering. Um, very similarly, if you don't want to take back engineering or data engineering, but you'd rather want to take full stack engineering, there, um, the first few months are spent making you good a good front-end engineer, so hence a lot of concepts of HTML, CSS, uh, depth of JavaScript. Um, we use React.js as the reference platform, so so again, getting into the depths of React.js, building something uh, and building multiple things in process, and then getting to the particulars of, let's say, if you have to create a backend, which could be in Python or Node.js, then how do you go about creating that? What are good practices there? Um, and again, looking at certain complexities when you're building an application end to end. Apart from all of this, even if you have chosen a specialization, but you're curious about the other verticals, you get to, for example, if you chose backend, but you want to, let's say, do data engineering, data engineering is also offered as an elective, which means you can finish backend engineering and then take data engineering. That is also a possibility. Um, very similarly, if you have chosen a specialization, let's say backend, but you were interested in also looking at full stack development, we on request also give you the videos for the other track, which you can go over at your time. Um, not just this, what we also see is that the curriculum keeps evolving. One of the other things that we do is we very frequently talk to companies to figure out what is changing and how they hire versus what makes developer more effective. And one thing which has changed in the last one to two years is that uh, LLMs and AI has become an integral part of even of software engineering. So companies now look at people who are good at the fundamentals of software engineering, but maybe might have done a project or might have a basic understanding of how to integrate LLMs, how to use RAG, how to, let's say, use vector DBs. Uh, and given that, we've also integrated a module now, which helps you become comfortable with all of these aspects as well, irrespective of the specialization that you choose. So you might choose backend, you might choose full stack, you might choose data engineering, but then how do you leverage um, AI? How do you integrate LLMs to build certain features which were otherwise not possible? That is another thing that we cover in the program. In general, what we see is that the same solution doesn't fit all. Even if you want to become a backend engineer, if I put you in the same classroom as a fresher, and let's say you are a senior engineer, then the same solution doesn't fit all. So one of the other things that is also possible at Scalar is that depending on what your background is, we work with you to figure out what is the right sequence of module which works basis your current experience. We are very cautious to make sure you don't miss out on a topic which you otherwise would need. But at the same time, we also understand that your time has a lot of value. So we try to sequence the modules in a way where they will add the most amount of value to you. And we recommend to skip the modules, which will not. Um, the course, however, is really, really comprehensive. Um, 
and we day in day out go and talk to employers to figure out what is missing and then how can we include that in the program if you're interested in knowing more about the subtopics within each of these modules i'm attaching a link below if you open that then module by module you'll be able to see the subtopics that are covered note that every subtopic might be covered across multiple classes or might be covered in a single class that's not specified date but like the entire module will end up covering all of the topics that are there present in the link thank you